early morning of the 4th of November 1966, we heard bells, a new type of bells, not the ordinary bells of the church, but bells that came also from far away, not quite close to us. And they were dramatic calls, really. It was that sound, boom, 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 which meant a disaster had happened. An extraordinary rainfall uh, fell on uh, Arno River Basin. In less than two days, over 1,500,000,000 million of cubic meters of water uh, fell on, on our land and determined an extraordinary uh, runoff. During the night between 3 and 4 November, something like 4,100 cubic meters tried to pass. Uh, only 3,000 could pass and the other flooded Florence uh, with over 70 million cubic meters of water. The problem then was how to walk. You couldn't walk because the mud was so slippery and uh, that was one of the great problems really. We Florentines were not left alone. Radio amateurs helped spread the news and thousands of people, the Mud Angels, came to help from all over the world. When uh, I heard of the flood, I was really so distressed the damage that I understood had been done, that I wanted to come back and just to help in whatever way I could. Completely impassable with overturned cars and mud and debris from stores. And even to walk down the street was rather treacherous because you never knew where there was a hole that may have been covered with just a thin layer of grass and you were afraid that you might go through it. I never saw one Florentine cry. I'm sure in the evening they might go home and cry in their family. I didn't see one tear. They were so courageous and so resilient. Um, magnificent is the word that I would say for the spirit of the Florentine people. And that's something I will never, ever forget. The reason why Florence attracted universal attention was really art. It was the damage to art, and art is universal. Anywhere they sent me, I would go and clean and then, uh, you know, go home. And uh, there was no way of washing my clothes afterwards when I got back because there was no water. They were slimy, they were all this muddy, grayish color. Um, the pages were all stuck together and in horror. I mean, you couldn't even read what the title was. They gave us a powder, I don't know what it is, and we had to dust the, the, each page so that it would dry, and then you carefully take the page and pull it over and put on another layer of dust. And I did this from the morning till far into the evening. Now we are inside the lab of the Fortezza da Basso, where was established the lab for uh, works of art damaged by the flood immediately in the spring of 1967. That terrible disaster began the connection between the art conservation with the scientific world. This is one of the five parts of uh, an enormous panel painting by Giorgio Vasari, uh, the Last Supper, uh, 
which is probably one of the last uh, important painting damaged by the flood, uh, still awaiting for conservation. So we have a double problem, a problem of uh, adhesion of the color and a problem of decohesion of the ground layer underneath. And for this reason, the conservation of uh, paintings damaged by the flood is much more complex than any other case of damages we know. You can maybe have a flood or a disaster, but the beauty of the city will always remain and that there's always, you know, hope for tomorrow.